What is good, everybody? Today we are back with a brand new WWE Elite Build-A-Figure set. And this time it is on the WrestleMania 41 WWE Elite Build-A-Figure Howard Finkel Wave. We have Seth Rollins, Bret Hart, Bianca Belair, and Hulk Hogan. A lot of good in this set. Maybe there's some bad in this set. We're going to find out together today as we dive into all of this stuff, man. You guys know that I get the sets late most of the time, so I do apologize for the timing of this. And then tomorrow we'll probably do the Royal Rumble set with the great Kyle Lee, so just be on the lookout for it. Should be a fun time, man. But today we are getting into the WrestleMania 41 Elites. We have... Vegas represented right here. And we're going to take you through each individual figure, showcase all of it, and just get into it, man. So let's break things down. First of all, we do have Seth freaking Rollins right here. Probably the figure I'm most excited for with the pink gear. I was there live at WrestleMania 39 for this exact matchup. He took on Logan Paul. He is looking really, really good here, though. I love the pink. The pink just looks so saturated and good. I was really blown away by this figure at San Diego Comic-Con. We had no idea this figure was coming, and then they just kind of, you know, dropped it on us, so I was excited for this. And on the back of the figure, you do get a shot of the talent there. You get to build a figure Howard Finkel legs and has the rest of the figures down in the wave there. The next figure is going to be the Bret Hart. Now, I know we have some hot takes about the Bret Hart. I think his eyes like, I think the likeness is kind of there, but the eyes are too far apart and it kind of throws everything off, but we won't know unless we unbox him. So we're going to get into the Bret Hart figure. On the shot of the back, you do get a nice image of Bret Hart there. You have the bio read and all the good stuff going on. So there is our Bret Hart figure. They also have Bianca Belair and I think this could be our best Bianca Belair Elite of all time. We do know that we had her back in Elite, what, 91 I think it was and then we had her an ultimate edition i still think this one's going to be the best one you get the raw women's championship in there gold and the bread and all of the stuff so this should be a good one i think this bianca belair is going to nail it and last but not least we do have hulk hogan here which is what i always dub chilling out the con chilling hulk hogan because it's kind of post-retirement he's chilling out he's got his long black pants on you know it's signing autographs hanging out at WrestleCon, chilling over there signing autographs hulk hogan is what i think of this but I really dig this packaging, the Vegas WrestleMania 41 logo. Howard Finkel, of course, is our, our Build-A-Figure. We will build him at the end, and we will rank this set, including the Build-A-Figure. So we'll take a look at every single individual figure, you know, chop it up, look at their accessories, everything like that. And then, at the end, we will rank the set from worst to best, including the Build-A-Figure, and see where this set stands as a whole, man. So, with that being said, man, if you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Always appreciate Ringside Collectibles, as always. But do not hesitate if you guys want these figures or anything more, go over to Ringside Collectibles, save yourselves 10% by using code MDTOYS. But with that being said, man, let's crack these figures out of their packaging, find out what the hell they're all about, and see how they compare with the rest of our WWE action figure collections. So here's our full wave out of the packaging, and I gotta say, I think we, we have kind of a lack of accessories in this wave, but I feel like that's usually the case when we get into these WrestleMania pay-per-view Build-A-Figure sets. Usually there is a lack of accessories, it's just the way it is, unfortunately, but what we're gonna do is go left to right covering each figure individually, breaking down their accessories, and then I'll showcase the Howard Finkel at the end once we reach it. And we'll get into everything about it, man. So with that being said, let's start off with Seth Rollins and his accessories. And one by one, we will knock out each figure. And then we'll get into, of course, the Howard Finkel Build-A-Figure. And then we'll rank this set from worst to best. And we will include the Build-A-Figure at the end so that we can rank everything, man. I'm excited for it. Let's dive into it. So starting off first with Seth Rollins at the top of the head sculpt. Something we've already seen with Seth Rollins beforehand the last couple of years is this gritting head sculpt. We saw it back with his first Ultimate Edition or his Rainbow Attire Ultimate Edition with the cloth goods robe. The gritting head sculpt, he does have the blonde hair with the fade in there. I do like this ombre fade. The hair does look a bit cheddary instead of blonde, really. I mean, it's blonde, obviously, but it does have kind of a cheddary look. He has the faded beard. It's okay. It's not a bad head sculpt. It's just been reused over and over, but I do like the they continued with the ripped up torso with the stomach and chest hair, and he does not have the tattoo on the back of the neck. I don't know how we're missing that. That is a few figures in a row now that he is missing that. I think his top picks figure is missing that. I think his new Ultimate Edition coming is missing that, so that is quite a... You can't miss a detail like that, man. You can't miss a detail like that. Double jointed arms, white wrist tape. I think that they could use a like a more ripped up arm mold for Seth Rollins, but I don't hate this arm mold. That is unfortunate about the tattoo, but going down, we do have the belt right here that is loose. This is a loose piece, and it does have nice sculpts on it though like if you're looking right here it's got like the puffy stuff and the texturized stuff in there which is nice which you know this figure is not a repaint this is not a repaint because there's so many newly sculpted things on here but you can see the clip on the front right there it's kind of just a belt design i don't know if i'm sure this was stitched onto the tights of the pants because if you were wrestling and this was just a belt that was around your waist clipped to the waist right there it would obviously fall off and be you know running around everywhere but we do have these newly sculpted legs with the puffer pads i guess you could call it on the sides there he did have a very 
extravagant entrance at WrestleMania 39, of course. And the legs are really nicely sculpted. Dude, the pink on here is so vibrant and nice. It reminds me of the channel and everything. And you can even see this Vegas background that has all these neon colors. It's just really, really nice and appealing. I think these legs look crazy, dude. They're absolutely insane. You even have the knee pads in there. Same pink as the tights. And then you do have the pink kick pads in there with this shiny kind of orangey pink face on them that does kind of have a sheen to it. So that's pretty cool as well. I wish he'd come with some sort of entrance jacket or something, but I understand there's probably a lot of tooling and sculpt that went into this figure. So I definitely understand what they were going for there. But articulation wise, I mean, he feels pretty good. You know, he can actually kick forward and stuff like that. I'm not running into any just horrific articulation angles. So that is good there. He's got all your standard articulation when it comes to Seth Rollins. You get the boots swivel, you get the thigh swivel, you get the double jointed knee in there. Kind of hindered by the, the knee pads there. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fun figure overall. I don't think you're going to hate it or anything. It certainly has better proportions and stuff like that when it comes to Seth Rollins. So I like it. I like it. But in terms of accessories, man, pretty bare bones. So he's going to come with a pair of fisted hands, which is something we've seen a hundred times before. He also comes with a pair of mic holding hands. He also comes with the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard, Johnny Gargano, newly sculpted hand shaking entrance style hands. And then he also comes with a pair of the entrance style hands, the Randy Orton vibes, you know, entrance style hands for him to sing along with the crowd. And last but not least, he does come with the legs of the Build-A-Figure Howard Finkel, which isn't necessarily an accessory, but it's good to know that he comes with the legs. So getting into Bret Hart, I think the head sculpt actually is not as bad as I was expecting it to be. I just think the eyes are a little bit off. The eyes are a little bit off in terms of spacing or something, but I can actually see the vision. I can see the vision a little bit. I can kind of see where they were going with this head sculpt. It's just it barely misses the mark for me. And anybody that's a Matt, like you can definitely tell, like look at this right here. That looks way more like Bret Hart, you know, when you cover up the other eye. And then when you cover up this side, it kind of looks like Bret Hart too. But then when you see them together, it kind of loses it. But it's not the worst head sculpt of all time. I think that it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. That angle right there, I can kind of see what they were stepping in right there. I can see that bangs coming down. It's not a, as bad of a head sculpt as I was afraid of. Going down to the torso, we do have the little pink heart there and the singlet going over the pink thighs. Now, I don't know exact what WrestleMania this is from, so I need all my Bret Hart connoisseurs to dive into the comment section below. Got the long wrist tape in there. He also has the solid black on the back. Does have the elbow pads. I don't know if he wore the open elbow pads at this juncture. I really wish they'd give us the open elbow pads, but... Then you go down on the tights, they're just pink. I really like the stripes, though. You have the black outline on the white stripe going down. Black knee pads, and then you have some of the cleanest boots in the game with the Jordan 11 looking. They're not inspired by the Jordan 11, but damn, they look like them, you know what I'm saying? With that patent leather wrapping around, you have the pink, white, and black. Just a clean colorway. Overall, not a bad Bret Hart. I actually like it a lot more than I was expecting, but one thing you're going to hate is the legs. Man, look at that right there. It's got that damn Rey Mysterio style thing where he will not... God, dude, that is so damn frustrating. I can't stand that. You can't kill you do get the thigh swivel and the double jointed knee, but it's all for naught if you can't even kick forward. It does this thing right here. I think there is a way to fix it, though. I just think it requires you have to, like, take the whole leg off. The ab crunch is something we've seen before because it's the exact same mold that we've seen for Bret Hart singlets. But one of the biggest things is on these modern figures that I found is he, like, oh God, it's when you try to, like, stand them straight up, they have a slight hunch forward because these legs don't go all the way back in place, and it's so damn annoying, man, so. So that is something you definitely need to be on the lookout for, but everything else feels buttery smooth. I'm not running into any issues, but those legs can ruin a figure for me. I can't, oh man, makes me want to just burn my face off. But at the end of the day, he does come with the Johnny Gargano handshaking entrance style handshaking hands. He comes with mic holding hands, and he does come with a pair of fists to beat the hell out of people. And then the Build-A-Figure piece that Bret Hart comes with is the torso of the Howard Finkel figure, and it does have a nice bow tie on there, which I love. I'm a bow tie guy. I don't like the damn long ties, man. Give me a bow tie every time. And then we're diving into one of the more detailed figures in the set, which is going to be Bianca Belair, and I think this is the best elite Bianca Belair we've seen, and I was a huge fan of both of her previous figures. They were really, really strong, but this one is just as good. I don't think Bianca Belair has ever had a bad figure. She's one of those people that is batting a 1,000. She's the Damian Priest of the women's division, apparently. She bats a 1,000. Great-looking head sculpt, and one thing that's cool is she does have the removable earrings, man, so definitely be careful there. She's got the hoop earrings right here. You want to be careful putting those back in. I am one that never removes them, man. I'd rather her beat the hell out of people with it while she's wearing them, you know what I mean? I just don't want to remove them. You have the bangs coming down. You do have her long hair, which is very nice here. No looks or anything. The, the band of the hair is not even painted, which is weird. I feel like she usually has EST or Bianca or Bel Air or the kiss emojis or lips or whatever. I feel like that's usually in the hair somewhere, but I don't see it there. I love this gear, and I do believe she does all of her own gear. She stitches it, hand makes it, whatever. This is very impressive, and I love how creative it is. So you do have the Hollywood 
Hollywood star they were in Hollywood or LA for this WrestleMania. So it's very genius that she would have the Hollywood star with the Bianca Belair and she does have like the, the lips emoji in there with the red and the textures and everything. Very good sculpt work. You even have the lips coming down here in the gold and black. Very, very detailed figure. I like this. I don't like, is that the damn, okay. Is that the trademark on the back of her back? Okay, it's not. It's just wrinkles. I was about to... F oh, dude, that would have been terrible. Got the gold sleeves right there, or the gold... Actually, I bet these were see-through, if I had to guess. I bet they were, like, uh, kind of like fish netting. But you have the stars, you have the sleeves with the uh, lips on there, and the gold. Just very, very clean aesthetic of this figure, man. You have the gold coming down. EST on the big knee pads, which I don't care for. I'll probably just remove those. But the gold boots look really clean there. Not the ultimate this time, though. They're just normal elite boots, but they look good. And she has a damn ankle rocker, which is something that's been missing from women's figures forever. So the gold boots are really, really clean. Very nice job on this figure. I'm trying to think of all the elite women's figures we've seen so far this year. This is probably going to be up there for the best of them. Look at that articulation. Good ar good kick forward. I know it's a women's figure, so the ab crunch kind of stinks, but I don't have that stuck shoulder problem. Double jointed arms, full rotation. Yeah, dude, this figure kicks all the A, and she doesn't have any stiffness, really, man, even though she has the large knee pads on. So that is really good. Boot swivel, boot ankle rocker, and the boots go up and down. I love this Bianca Belair. Holy crap. What a great figure, man. Just an excellent Bianca Belair. I, I love this. This is, I, I'm actually, I, I feel good about this figure, man. I really feel good about it. But let's get into the accessories that she comes with. She does come with a, it looks like a newly painted Raw Women's Championship. She has Bianca Belair side plates. So I want to say this is the first time we've seen the smaller version of the Raw Women's Championship. We have seen a couple SmackDown versions, but we've never seen a Raw one to my knowledge, at least off the top of my head. Could be wrong there, but it looks really good. I like the glossy paint behind there. Just a really good looking title. The sculpt looks good. The paint apps look good. They did a really good job on this raw title. I like it a lot. This is very, very clean aesthetically. And then she also comes with a pair of sunglasses that have a unique shape here. I'm guessing this is from her entrance. And if you guys wanted to put these on her right here, you would be able to do so by simply putting them under the bangs right here and then hooking them onto the ear. You know how sunglasses work. And I gotta pull this hair through right here and just pull that down onto the face. And there we go. She's wearing the sunglasses and I'm pretty sure they can go on there better than that. Hold up now. And bam, they look pretty good. So they did a great job on this Bianca Belair. I'm actually kind of blown away by it. This, this figure is very fun to pose around and stuff too. Now outside of that, she is going to come with mic holding hands, no fingernail polish or anything on there, which is kind of bummerific. I guarantee she painted her nails, but maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't, but she does come with mic holding hands. She also comes with a pair of wide open entrance style hands right here. She can do the DDP. She can catch a football. She can slap people. So that's good. And she also comes with a pair of fists to beat the hell out of people like Bianca Belair likes to do. And she also comes with the Howard Finkel build a figure head sculpt. So if you want more Howard Finkel build a figure head sculpts, you got to pick up the Bianca Belair from this set. So starting out with Hulk Hogan, man, I really, really like this new head sculpt. It has a really good post-retirement chilling out the con head sculpt going on. Really strong likeness. I like the blonde. I like the headband and the headband or the bandana doesn't come off. It's actually stuck on there. So I think that's even better, man. You don't have to deal with that looseness. I think this is awesome. A really good sculpt all around. I think you might could even go a step further. If you put some accessories on them and painted this black or made your own Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you could probably do that. Or you could probably make different versions of Hulk Hogan using this head sculpt. I really, really like this head sculpt. It's a good Hulk Hogan. I think Hulk Hogan fans are going to be excited about this one. Hulkamania across the front right there. Really good likeness. I didn't take the shirt off because it's going to be really difficult, but it is a non-Velcro shirt. So you have Hulk's rules and on the back it does say train, eat your vitamins, say your prayers, believe in yourself, brother. Hulk Hogan's signature, no Velcro. It does have the white on the inside so it shouldn't stain or anything like that, but it is a nice red shirt. I really like this Hulk Hogan in terms of just, you know, it's it's not your favorite version. It's like, why do I need Hulk Hogan chilling out at the con? But it's a really good execution, you know? And I can always appreciate that about an action figure. If, if they make a really dumb figure like Shield Kurt Angle or something, but then the figure's really well executed, that's one thing. But I am uh, liking this. I like the newly added skin tone here, the double jointed arms and the shirt and the head sculpt. It's just a good figure overall. It feels really good in hand. It's got the same Elite 34 crotch and legs here. No pinless joints, so you know he's going to be buttery smooth. And then it just goes all the way down into, you know, black boots right there, man. And you could probably make a finger poke of doom out of this, potentially, I think. You might, you really could. One thing about Hulk Hogan, though, is he always looked like my Uncle Tony. Rest in peace, man. Uncle Tony looked just like Hulk Hogan. It was crazy. I, and I never saw him in the same place at once, you know what I'm saying? So, my Uncle Tim looked like Samoa Joe. My Uncle Tony looks like Hulk Hogan. And, uh, you know, that's just how it was. And I'm pretty sure they were brothers, actually. They were brothers. Nuts. 
nuts, man. But Hulk Hogan looks good, man. I, I like this figure. You can pose around very nicely, even though you don't really need a ton of articulation with this guy. Look at that back ab crunch, front ab crunch. Just an overall fun figure, but... In terms of accessories, he does come with a pair of yellow sunglasses. Now, I do believe this is the exact same mold that we saw in one of his previous figures. But you can take this and slide that up into the, the bandana. Look at that right there, man. That is so nice. You can slide it inside the bandana and it works perfectly for Hulk Hogan. I love that. That is such a great job of execution by Mattel. Now, it also comes with the stiff rubber boa or plastic boa, whatever. I don't like this. I just, you know, I guess it looks good on display, but I'm just not a big fan of the boas. If I had a nice display where I could actually pose my figures around on my display, then maybe I'd feel differently, but I don't know. I don't really care for this. I guess it gets the job done, though. It's fine. And then for his interchangeable hands, he does come with a pair of mic-holding hands. My god, it's like everybody and their mom comes with these Johnny Gargano entrance handshaking ricochet Kawhi Leonard style hands nowadays, but he also comes with those. I mean, my god, they plug these in every damn set. They're becoming AEW microphones at this point. And last but not least, he does come with a pair of fists to beat the hell out of people. Alright, man, so building the Howard Finkel figure right here, the Seth Rollins comes with the legs, the Bret Hart comes with the torso, Bianca comes with the head sculpt, and Hulk Hogan comes with the arms, and he also comes with the interchangeable hands, and he comes with the microphone that Howard Finkel will hold, and you'll never guess it, but he also comes with the AEW microphone equivalent with the Johnny Gargano handshaking entrance hands. But to build this figure, you're going to take your torso here, you're going to take your legs, you're going to stick that right there. Jesus Christ, is this going to go on? There it goes. All right. Got it in there. Jesus. Looking like James Bond over here, but then we're going to take our right arm. I'm going to slide that up in there. Dude, sometimes these things don't go on very good, I'll be honest with you. But uh, right now, we're, we're cooking. We're cooking all right. We're looking okay. Uh, I think that's in there good. Dude, very tight build a figure. Jesus Christ, he is in there. He is in there. Last but not least, we're going to pop on the Howard Finkel head skull. Greatest ring announcer of all time right here, man. Don't care what anybody says. And bam, we have our Howard Finkel build a figure. And if you are against him being the best ring announcer of all time, you just don't, you don't know ball. You don't know ball, man. He's the GOAT. He is the GOAT until further notice. There's some great ones, no doubt, but Fink is the GOAT. Now, this looks to be a different head sculpt. I want to say last time he had a completely, like, smile face, but he does have the nice Paul Feinbaum haircut on the sides, but he's looking pretty, uh, looking handsome right there, killing it with the mustache, kind of has a Dale Earnhardt vibe. But I like this head sculpt. This looks to be a newer head sculpt, though, or true effect, something. Something is different about this head sculpt than the last one, and I don't know where my last one is, but he does have the same sculpted bow tie in there with the black jacket, something we've seen quite a few times before. It's just a standard black jacket, standard black arms with the wrinkles and the pinless double-jointed arms. And then he does have those new, you know, Mr. Perfect legs that are a little bit baggier and they go down on the shoes. I know it's, you know, it's not the most exciting Build-A-Figure of all time in terms of sculpts and stuff, but I love guys in suit as an action figure because you could use them in a lot of different ways. But his articulation feels really good, except for when his shoulder falls out and it makes me want to throw him the hell out in the yard. But, uh, yeah, I mean, double-jointed arms, all the good stuff. I, I like this Howard Fingal a lot and I hope to be able to build another one, but I don't know about you guys, but every time I try to go build a new, anytime I try to repeat build figures, I can never find the full set in person. That's just how I am. I cannot ever. The only way I can do that is if I order it or something, but I like the Howard Finkel. I love Howard Finkel, obviously, so I enjoy it. It's a good figure, but now it's time to rank this set from worst to best, get these guys the hell out of here and rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. So we do have five figures here. Just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean that it's the worst figure ever. And just because a figure comes in at the top doesn't mean that it's without any flaws whatsoever. So we're going to get into it here today, man. Starting out at number five for me. I went with the Bret Hart. I went with the Bret Hart because of the articulation mainly, but I'm still, I still feel like the head sculpt's not perfect. It's a lot better than I thought it would be, but I don't really care for the gear either. It's just not a Bret Hart that stands out to me, one that I really, really enjoy. So he comes in at the bottom. Coming in at number four, I have the Hulk Hogan figure. Now the Hulk Hogan figure is very underrated. I actually enjoy the Hulk Hogan a lot, chilling out with the con Hulk Hogan. Really fun figure, good head sculpt, good execution, really good re-release of that original Elite 34. So I think that says something about the figure. I actually, I like the figure. I think they did a good job on it, and I don't think this ranking really does it justice because I don't think that figure is as bad as a number four out of five figure ranking, if that makes sense. So there is that right there. Coming in at number three, we have the Fink. I really, really like the Fink. I love the Build-A-Figure. I love the suited body and the posability and all those things. But at the end of the day, I would prefer the other two figures, I think, ultimately. And I think that uh, this wave's actually pretty strong, actually. Overall, I really like this set. But coming into the number two spot, I did go with the Bianca Belair. Very, very good Bianca Belair. Very fun figure overall. Just an outstanding piece in terms of details. They did an excellent job on it. She bats a thousand. 
and that figure is very impressive. But then number one is going to be Seth Rollins. You guys probably knew it because it is, it's a pink gear. I was there in person. I mean, I was there in person for both of these matches, but I was there in person. I got to see him and Logan Paul do war. I love the pink attire. Having a well-built Rollins in pink and actually getting that figure in figure form or getting that attire in figure form is not something that I thought we'd get. So when they actually did give that to us, I was quite happy about it. I mean, you know, I was impressed and, and excited to get that in hand, so that should be fun there. But overall, the set, again, is a really good set. I had a lot of fun with this set, posing it around, and just getting to review it here in the station was really fun, man. It's, it's a really good set overall. I think that all the figures are worth picking up to a certain extent. Again, that Bret Hart posability is really my least favorite part. And then the Bret Hart head sculpt, just there's something about those eyes, man. I'm telling you, something about the eyes there. But incredible set, you know, through and through. I think that, you know, they always do well on the Hogan's for whatever reason, but it's a really good re-release of the Elite 34 with the updated skin tone, great head sculpt, great, you know, shirt. Just, uh, just overall, just impressed, man. Like, was every selection here just knock it out of the park? Absolutely not, but... I hope that at WrestleMania 41, maybe these figures will be on display to purchase. They'll be $80 a pop, but maybe I'll be able to, to buy one or a bonus figure or something like that to try and build a Howard Finkel, man. So I hope you guys see this in time because the until WrestleMania, at WrestleMania at the Superstore, this set will be for sale and they're going to be charging like $50 an Elite, which is absolutely insanity. But they'll do it, man. They'll do it. And if you are not aware that these figures are super old, you'll sit there and buy those things, man. It happens. They go after the casuals every time. The casual action figure collectors, they try to get you every single time at these big shows, man. So just stay aware. I'm telling you. It's just it's going to happen. And I'm going to put it in the vlog, and it's going to be a thing. But at the end of the day, a huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below, as always. But I do appreciate the Patreon support, man. You guys are absolutely incredible. And it was a very fun WhatNot stream last night. You guys were absolutely incredible. We had over 300 viewers most of the time, and it was just a great show. You guys were incredible. Moved a lot of items. It was just a lot of fun. But I'm getting the hell out, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.